This podcast is kindly sponsored by Camera Museum of London at 44 Museum Street. Hello, this is Richard Lipman of a Fish Out of Water podcast. Today we are at the Jamboree and there is a folk festival, an all-day folk festival. I'm here with the person who runs the festival and his name is... Paul Mitchell Moore. Hi. Tell us about the festival and what are its aims. Uh, so this is the Harrison All Day Folk Festival. Uh, it's being held by the Harrison Pub uh, in Kings Cross, just around the corner. Uh, we're trying to raise money to pay off our COVID debts, and so we're putting on uh, a series of all-day folk festivals here at the beautiful Jamboree, our friends the Jamboree. And it's, yeah, it's 12 hours of great music, quite varied, uh, from folky hip-hop to uh, very traditional English or Irish stuff, uh, singer-songwriter and a bit of trad jazz and kind of swing. Uh, it's a lot of good, a lot of fun, a lot of nice people. How did you get into the folk scene? Uh, I took over the Harrison 20 years ago and I've always loved folk music but me, me and my sister used to go around London looking for it and it's it's hard, to, it was hard to find in those days. Cecil Sharp House was about the only place, the odd like very dying kind of session but uh, yeah, when I got the pub, I saw an opportunity with some uh, with some friends uh, from the Enemy, actually, uh, the Enemy magazine, and uh, yeah, we put started putting on folk nights. Who will be the lady? Who will be the Lord? When we are ruled by the love of one another, who will be the lady? Who will be the Lord in the light that is coming in the morning? So sing John Bull and tell it to them all. Long live the day that is calling. And oh, like a cock, oh, carol like a lark in the light that is coming in the morning. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, t- tell us about what you're doing here, and what's your name? Uh, my name's Alan. Um, I'm just a punter for the Harrison All Day Folk Festival. Um, I came for the first thing, which is a, a folk sing-along thing, because that's a bit of a hobby of mine. I'm Jackie. Yes, I've also come to the All Day Festival. I've been to uh, several and the idea is to try and raise money to save the lovely Harrison pub. Tell, about, tell us about English folk music. I understand you're doing a cappella. Well, what's it all about and where, where do the traditions come from, the songs? Um, I got into this through joining a choir in the local area called Fire Choir. Um, but also since doing that, I've got really into doing sort of campfires and sort of those sorts of communal folky sing-alongs, I think. The important thing about folk music, it was something done, it's an art form that everyone can participate in, whether it's art, music or dancing. And I think there's something really special about sort of being around a campfire, just everyone bringing their own songs, singing songs that everyone knows or can learn really easily. Uh, and I I don't know, the his, I'm not a historian, but a lot of this music sort of came from that sort of similar tradition of, you know, people singing together, one person leading a song, uh, political songs, songs about nature, all of that comes from that same sort of really ancient form of communication and getting together. Some of, some of it's connected with English households and royalty and uh, people living in the towns and struggles. Uh, yeah, I, I think some of it's, I don't think much of it necessarily came from the royalty. Uh, I, I prefer the sort of political stuff about it a lot of the stuff which is about you know taking taking down those people songs about you know reclaiming the land uh fighting back against landlords or those who wish to you know divide us uh you know i I love old union songs i love old you know quite like nature songs uh work songs classic blues a lot of that has a sort of that feeling of like togetherness and just everyone singing together and also fighting oppression, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, f- f- fighting the good fight. I think, I think folk art, it's, it's like the form follows the function. Because we're all, say, singing together or dancing together or making music together, it engenders that sense of sort of solidarity. Uh, it's why up until relatively recently in our history, political marches would always have sing-alongs, you'd always have, you know, union songs. Um, I went to a in, uh, what's it called, 
at the Bishop's Gate Institute, they have a little display case about which often covers various bits about radical history and uh, some little fact, uh, some little item that I really liked was a union conference songbook, which you don't really have anymore. You know, most of these things, you know, just a series of talks and that sort of thing. But I think if people went and sang together, maybe they'd feel a bit more of a sense of togetherness, even more than they do just say working together, because there's something very nice about you know, singing with one another, harmonising, trying to get on each other's wavelength and frequency and all that sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, the thing about folk music, it's not precious. Um, sort of, there's no wrong notes, if you like. Um, and it does give a great sense of, of togetherness. And I don't think I've got anything more to add. Um, but I mean, I, I love, well, I love singing, but I do love singing uh, folk and I, I'm in the Cecil Sharp House Choir. I was in Far Choir. So, and I, I've, I've, um, my confidence has increased uh, in the sing arounds. Um, and as I say, it's it's not precious, and everyone joins in. Oh, a sharp safe sailing and fair winds to blow, and joy to my true love wherever she goes. Like, I don't just sing depressing songs, they're just generally miserable. Um, <laughs> and this next one is uh, no change, really. Um, but it's slightly more fun, although there's a trigger warning of domestic violence involved. But it's folk music, what do you expect? Um, there once was a woman, she lived on her own, she slaved on her own, and she skivvy on her own. She two little girls and two little boys and she lived all alone with her husband oh her husband he was a hunk of a man he was a chunk of a man he was a drunk of a man he was a hunk of a chunk of a drunk of a man such a boozing abusing her husband for he would come home drunk each night and he thrashed her black and he thrashed her white he would thrash her too within an inch of her life. And then he slept like a log did her husband. One night she gathered her tears and her shame and she thought of the bruising and she cried from the pain. Oh, he'll not do that ever again. I'll not live with a drunken husband. And as her husband lay and snored in the bed, the strangest thought came into her head. She went for the needle and she went for the thread and went straight into her sleeping husband. Oh, the top sheet and the bottom sheet too, the blanket stitched to the mattress through. She stitched and stitched the whole night through. And then she waited for the dawn and her husband. And when her husband woke with a pain in his head, he found he could not move in the bed. Sweet Christ, I've lost the use of my legs. But this wife just smiled at her husband, for in her hand she held a frying pan. With a flutter in her heart, she's given him the lamb. He could not move and he cried, God damn. Don't you swear, she cried at her husband. And then she thrashed him black and she thrashed him blue with a frying pan and a colander too. With a rolling pin, just a stroke or two. Such a battered and bleeding husband. She said, if ever you come home drunk anymore, I'll stitch you in and I'll thrash you more. I'll pack my bags and I'll be gone. I'll not live with a drunken husband. So isn't it true what small can do with a thread and a thought and a stitch or two? He's wiped his slate and the boozing's through. It's goodbye to a drunken husband. Hi, 
I'm Jenny. I'm a folk musician and a historian, um, and I sing traditional folk songs largely from a female perspective. This is a song called Stitch in Time, written by Mike Waterson, um, and it is a really, it's more of a fun sort of juxtaposition between um, the tradition that is that women tend to be um, sexually assaulted or domestically abused or killed in most folk songs um, and instead it kind of turns it on its head and the woman stands up and goes no here's some of your own medicine um, and I think more I was sort of getting to is it doesn't tend to be sung by men occasionally it is and it's always really fun when it is um, but yeah I think there's some kind of must be some kind of stigma around it around men singing it but I don't, I don't think there is but it's all a bit of fun isn't it can you tell us about your folk tradition your music um yes it's very much the english traditional folk songs that i share with my audiences um and largely i change them around and change the words and sort of the point of view so that women tend to have a better time by the end of the song um, than they would otherwise um i've had a few gigs recently where men have walked out because apparently there's been too much man hating that's quite entertaining that very much makes me double down on those songs that just really go for men <laughs> Final words. Um, how would I stay? I don't know. <laughs> are you, you going to do a song about women hating? No, I think Andrew Tate's got that one down. Okay. And in terms of the man hating, how real is that? Or is, are you making fun? I'm very much making fun. I do not hate men. <laughs> so which are the festivals to go to for folk in the UK? Um, oh or God. even abroad? <laughs> <laughs> um, abroad, definitely Costa del Folk. Um, but no, I would say for the UK, it's Sidmouth, Broadstairs, Whitby, Cambridge, Warwick, Shrewsbury, Towersy this year. It's their last year of the festival. It's very much worth going. Um, Pretty, all of those kinds of ones. Thank you very much. Jenny Higgins, right? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Cheers. You've got me on the you spot got, there. Yeah, I know, I always do that. <laughs> Jamboree, is this a separate venue? Yeah, Jamboree is separate to the Harrison, but it's owned by friends. The, the London folk scene is cooperative, so all of the major players, whether it's Theobard at Woodburner, Joe Bursky at Far in the Mountain, uh, Rena here at Jamboree, or, or the girls over at uh, the Green Note, we all work together. We're, we're from the beginning, it's been a cooperative scene, and we love each other and we look after each other, and it's a beautiful thing. Nine dead men. Nine oh, dead mice. Sorry, nine dead mice. <laughs> why, why dead mice? Why nine? Well, yeah, that's a great question. Uh, because there's an old Wessex folklore cure um, for thrush, of all things, uh, where you get nine dead mice powder them, dry them, powder them, uh, and then pour them in a pint of real ale. And then you drink that, and then you'll be cured of your irritating thrush. I thought it was free, it's free dead mice to a pint of ale, but because there's three of us, we require nine to cure us entirely of thrush. We'll have to try <laughs> both ways. I, I think and You have nice. to drink the ale without in one go you have to down the whole pint right I think you just made up have I just made that up alright oh, yeah, but that's folklore yeah well, I've added to the story I went down the Satan's kitchen for the break for class one morning there I got soft piping hot along the stairs are turning my staff is through the giants and the bag along that carries for the cup makes yeah. my yeah. <laughs> yes. and, and so um, I hear, you know, I hear remnants of, uh, you know, music from the Middle Ages. Well, what's the take on that? Is there an influence? There's a couple of songs from the, like, you do one from the 14th century, don't you? I think like yeah. Maybe 16th century or something. But yeah, there's very old English songs in there. Yeah. I'm not sure. It's very traditional sounding. We've changed a lot of stuff about most of the stuff we're playing in terms of the harmony and sometimes the melody. And, and what about the instrumentation? Has that changed? Uh, As in what, our band? I do it from the original oh, versions. There are no original versions, really, I guess. Oh. Um, the instruments have changed. I mean, I don't think there were guitars in the Middle Ages and, and violins and cellos looked very different back then. 
And we, uh, we auto-tune everything as we're playing, <laughs> and they obviously were, they don't have that then. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So they were slightly out of tune, were they? Yeah, yeah, well, don't get me started on that. This is the whole thing, <laughs> actually. You, should, you should talk about this, yeah. Old tuning, well, oh, God, this is going to bore everyone. Um, <laughs> no, uh, folk music was recorded uh, and written down uh, by some... Uh, philanthropists, musical uh, historians that were like, oh, we've got to save this dying out thing. But they were just, they didn't write down intonation that well. So some of the old folky, twangy, wonky stuff was lost. Um, what was your question? Was that uh, out of tune. Um, <laughs> the tonation was different. Um, the the time of signature, what about that? Was that different too? The concept of tuning is a, is more a modern thing, so they they weren't out of tune, but by modern standards, I suppose it would have been. But there were quarter tones and things like that happening, which we don't get in Western modern music so much. Which is quite Ar Arabic. In the There's yeah, you find it in Turkish music a lot, yeah. Um, but it used to exist apparently in in English folk music. It was kind of ironed out by the Victorians who recorded a lot of the tunes. And yeah. there were regional variations in in tuning and, and intonation as well. Yeah, correct. <laughs> the, f the future, what's, what's, what's happening next? Uh. Oh, come on. Carnegie Hall next. Um, wh how is it? How is it to to make a living out of folk music? Is it is it possible? I'm sure it's possible, but uh, it's not a it's not a good <laughs> uh, it's not a good business plan. <laughs> like I wouldn't I wouldn't advise it if you just, if you want to be really rich. We met a folky at, um, at a wedding last week or a couple of weeks ago. He's in a quite a well known English folk band, and he was still playing covers on a cajon at a wedding. So there's, it's difficult, I think. What about people like the Pogues? They yeah. But uh, you can't all be the Pogues, there's only one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, 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 the great, well, what's really good is lots of people think that they could be the next successful folk band like us. So there's loads of great folk out there, which is good, but it's, uh, we're not rich yet. <laughs> what about someone like uh, Shirley Collins? Have you ever thought of collaborating with her? She's cool. <laughs> she, yeah, she, well, she collaborates with uh, the Brighton Morris men. So she's right. like their custodian. And she wow. has actually collaborated with them on stage at the Dome in Brighton. Cool. That's very cool. Because she's, yeah, she's just an amazing character and singer. And her voice is great. I think it's very good. I don't think she'd pick up she the phone She might, to she <laughs> might. There, if I, maybe I'll, I Morris dance occasionally, so maybe I'll Morris dance outside <laughs> her to house until she comes out and then I'll propose a, a collab. So yeah, there we go. This is another song from that new record. It's called Three Button Suit, inspired by cash converters on Shields Road in Newcastle upon Tyne. You've got a microphone, sir. Do you want to say something? No. <laughs> Uh, my name is Rob Heron. Yeah, I play in a band called Rob Heron and the Teapad Orchestra. We play a bit of rockabilly, that is correct. We also play a bit of country, a bit of rhythm and blues, uh, gypsy jazz. Are these original songs? They are 99% original songs. We do an odd cover, yeah. But yeah, mostly my songs. So, you know, I like to keep the traditions of those music alive, even though I'm an English boy um, playing American music from the 1950s. But I don't see the need in copying those songs you know well copying them is what we do but um writing writing new versions of these these genres is important to me yeah i understand you were uh, singing about the doll were you ever on the doll i've been very lucky in that no but i am a self-employed musician um so you know i know i know hard times but uh no I'm, i've never been on the doll i'm a lucky one yeah because a lot of people are in this country especially up north so, so uh, is there more appreciation of uh, rockabilly and northern soul and different American styles up north than down south? Uh, no, no, I don't think necessarily. It's, yeah, in the 1970s, obviously, northern soul was in the north. But 
There's a good scene up north, but I think the scene down here, especially for Northern Soul, I don't know, it's not what really we play, but the soul, the soul scene in Bristol is what's jumping right now, as far as I know. I find in London there's a lot of great, there's a good circuit for the swing dance music and rockabilly, but it's, it's, all, it's all over. Europe is a really good place as well. We play a lot of gigs in Germany, Belgium, Spain. There's a good scene there for this kind of music. Hold my guitar today. There's a great festival in Spain we played a few years ago called the Rockin' Racing in, uh, in Tormelinos and that's a kind of, and people come over from all over the world for that festival. Bands from the States come and play just, you know, just to play that. Uh, there's, there's kind of these niche festivals, but yeah, I don't really like to bracket ourselves into any of these genres anyway, because it's kind of, we play, we play a bit of everything, you know. As much as we might be playing at a rockabilly festival, we're not a rockabilly band. We're, we might be playing at a jazz festival, we're not a jazz band. Yes. And how, how many hours a, a day do you have to practice in order to, to really get good? As um, I don't practice very much. Um, I guess I might have when I was younger. But yeah, I'm bad at practicing. I think some of the guys in the band, I mean, Ben on the saxophone, I know he practices for a solid two hours every day, you know. <laughs> I can see that you're wearing a cowboy hat and a uh, 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 sort of Texas uh, shirt and, and, and trousers from the 1955. Yeah, I mean, I like the vintage style as well as the music, you know. And it's good stage wear, you know. It makes, if we were playing this music wearing uh, modern clothing, it wouldn't have as much impact, I don't think. You know, it's, and I, just, I wear this every day, you know. It's, uh, I feel more comfortable in uh in his clothes and an Adidas tracksuit. Tell us about your tattoo, Zazu. Uh, yeah, the Zazu was a movement in Paris in the 30s, uh, which was an anti-Nazi um, movement of, of dandy men, and they, uh, and they were kind of solidarity with uh, the Jewish people in, in Berlin, in Paris even, uh, in, the, in the 1930s. And they, they wore zoot suits and they listened to jazz music, which was not allowed in, uh, in Nazi-occupied France. So yeah, I'm, I like the movement of Les Azou, they were called. It's worth Googling Les Azou. Wow, that's interesting. It reminds me of this book called And the Show Must Go On, which is about the how artists cope during the uh, Nazi Yeah, it's all about that. It's, about, you know, like, uh, it's about keeping culture alive when, when it's being suppressed by authorities. You know? I will jump out the queue by diamond ring for you with my cordini. I understand that um, there was a bit of a Hawaiian uh, influence that I yeah. heard. I mean, I, I don't know especially what part you're talking about, but yeah, I mean... The last song. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. So, oh, yeah, well, the yodeling, it's more of a kind of, yeah, there was, there was a That's big fun. scene in, uh, in the 1920s and 30s, there was a lot of yodeling cowboys in, in the States, and I guess they got that from... Uh, German Alpine traditions with immigrants coming over to the States, but there was, there was a big lot of yodeling cowboys, so that's where the yodeling comes from, yeah. It's, uh, and there's a, Jimmy Rogers was the kind of the father of yodeling country music, 
is a niche genre in itself. Do they still yodel in Germany, for example, in the mountains? Maybe. I don't know. When we play in Germany and I do that yodeling song, often people are like, oh, I can't believe you're yodeling. You know, it's, but it's very much of the kind of um, Texan cowboy tradition of yodeling that I'm doing rather than the traditional Bavarian stuff. It's quite different. Still sounds like uh, yeah, you know, you're yodeling, but... recent album in, in Berlin, how was that? Why Berlin? We did it in Berlin because there's a studio in Berlin run by a man called Axel Prefke, aka Cherry Casino, and he runs a studio called Lightning Recorders, and it's all analog, all 1950s microphones, tape machines, everything is like period correct. So that's why we did it there. It's like, and it sounds authentic, you know. No, until we press it to digital which obviously you have to do in the 21st century. Everything is like they did it in the 1950s. The difference? Well, you can tell by the sound. You can, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, it sounds different. It sounds warmer. It sounds just authentic, you know. I can't explain it. It just sounds different. And, and, and what about the actual audience reaction? Um, so how does it work on a, on a sort of a level of touring? Do you have management or what? We have a booking agent, um, but no, I am the frontman, singer, guitar player, and manager. But yeah, a booking agent is important. My day job is a booking agent for other bands. Uh, I wouldn't book our own gigs because it's a uh, conflict of interest, but yeah, no, no management. I mean, we're very much a DIY band, just uh, doing what we love. We're not trying to be famous or anything. We have here Paul the drummer, and um, he performed in Latin America and in Colombia, um, in, in Colombia, which is in Latin America. Yeah, yeah. it's a bit more. Yeah, it's what we did. Uh, we did. Uh, I did two two trips to Colombia. Um, the uh, musician I was playing with, his cousin's Colombian, so we we went round uh, we went around coffee region uh, for a while. It was fantastic, and uh, based herself in in Bogota. But uh, yeah, I, I managed to. I mean, as a percussionist, it was great. I hooked up with some some fantastic uh, musicians, a T play player, a quattro player, and they, they taught me some some rhythms that I couldn't quite comprehend at first. And uh, but I, I learned a lot. Yeah, we made some great music. But uh, you play us those rhythms. How would how would it sound like if you tap it? Well, there's a there's a fruit called uh, papa de yuca, and there's a rhythm that was described to me as. Papa de Yuca. Uh, it was kind of, you basically say the fruit, but it's a, a, a very strange rhythm. The only way that I could play it was to say the name of this fruit over and over again. Um, but it doesn't make sense without having the musicians there. But there were some really difficult, uh, difficult rhythms that you almost had to kind of dance to get them. It's, because about, it's about the cross rhythms in Latin music. Oh, yeah. as well. It's not about the, the one person doing one thing. Uh, it's about the three other percussionists doing the other things uh, yeah. layered up. And actually, yeah, there was there was a rhythm. Uh, one of them was like, "Could you maybe play the the clave?" And I was like, "Well, no, no, I, I'll not do the clave. I'll do everything else." And they're like, "If you don't do the clave, it's a waste of time. I'm not interested." <laughs> so uh, uh, I learned very quickly what was important, what wasn't. But yeah, Colombia was literally one of the best trips I've taken. Some of the best musicians I've ever met. Yeah. Apart from us. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> Goes without saying. I'll say it though. <laughs> How long did it take you to record the album? Two and a half days. That's unbelievable. That's very short. We did uh, like three or four takes of each song, you know. It's very quick. It's all straight to tape live. No, oh, it's all live? All live, yeah. Well, so if we got the track right, we went with it. That's it. That's the one. Uh, okay. 
Um, but how, how many microphones were there in the room? Were you all in one room or did you have to go in separate booths? No, all in one room, yeah. All the vocals and everything live. Um, a microphone each, I guess. You know, there's only one mic on the drums, one mic on the bass, one on the guitars. Five or six microphones. That's all you need, man. Overproduction is the curse of the 20th century. <laughs> or the 21st century, anyway. On that, we'll leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, man. Cheers. Good day. You too. Uh, can you tell us one last thing? Was there a song that inspired you? You know, can you tell us a story about a song that was inspired by something? Um, I guess when I started getting into this kind of music, it was Cab Calloway, um, Mini the Moochie or something. I mean, the actual, you know, song. Tell us a song that was inspired by real life. One of your songs. Oh, one of my songs inspired yes. by real life. They're all inspired by real life. Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, there's a lot of, like, quasi-political numbers in there, you know, social um, commentary rather than political. I don't like to be too over-political. There's a lot of drinking songs in there because being a musician, you drink a lot. So, I mean, I mean, probably the closest to home for me is a song called Go Home, The Party's Over because, you know, too many times have I found myself at a party when everyone's left and it's really time to go home. Um, that hits home hard to me, yeah. So, yeah, it's a personal biography, that one. This podcast is kindly sponsored by Camera Museum of London at 44 Museum Street. Thank you for listening to a Fish Out of Water podcast. This is your host, Richard Lipman. Should you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please get in touch. 